If you just started your first microeconomics class today, I can guarantee you that these concepts are going to appear on your first midterm. I know it's syllabus week. I know you probably didn't learn anything today in class, but save this video for later to review. And if you don't want to miss a beat the rest of the semester as I'm explaining these concepts, sign up for my email newsletter in my bio. On Mondays and Tuesdays, I send out emails to explain these concepts. And on Thursdays, I've got a free practice exercise to make sure that you're keeping up. With that being said, I'm just going to go through these concepts and tell you the most important thing to remember for your exam. Starting with opportunity cost up here this is the explicit or stated cost of a choice that you're making typically like an expense or something like that and add to it the implicit cost of that choice which means the value of the next best alternative that you pass up this is typically the income that you could have earned from that next best choice all right so that's opportunity cost next up here is economic profit the formula for this is total revenue minus opportunity cost because opportunity cost factors in the explicit and implicit cost of whatever you're doing and what i want to take note of here is that whenever this is negative that means that you're making the wrong choice and you should have picked the next best alternative instead. All right, next up here is marginal cost slash benefit. The biggest thing I want you to remember for this is that marginal just means change. So at a given unit to find the marginal benefit or cost, all you gotta do is find the previous unit's total benefit or cost and subtract from it the current unit that you're on. That change right there is the marginal cost or benefit. And when we're talking cost benefit analysis problems where they're asking you what unit you will consume to, the unit where marginal benefit equals marginal cost will be the last unit that you consume. All right, next up here, PPF or PPC curves. The curve itself represents your frontier for production. So anything beyond that curve is impossible to attain and any point within it is inefficient. A country's production should always rest along its PPF that is efficient output. Next up here, absolute advantage. These types of problems will have two parties with two goods and their output for each. A party has the absolute advantage in a good if they can just produce more outright. Whereas a party has the comparative advantage in a good if they can produce it at a lower opportunity cost. And with comparative advantage, it's guaranteed that one party will have it for one good and the other party for the other good. And then price range for trade with those types of problems, your professor might throw a question at you where it's like, what price is here? Here would both parties accept a deal at? Always look for prices that fall on or within the opportunity cost for both parties. The reason being, if you have the lower opportunity cost for a good, you're gonna be the one specializing in it and selling it. So that serves as kind of like the floor for eligible prices. Now for the other party, the buyer, their opportunity cost is above yours. And they're not gonna pay more than that opportunity cost for the good. So the other party's higher opportunity cost serves as the ceiling for eligible prices for trade. 